meeting in a while. I'm going to read a statement from Jim Kleberg's family. He's one of our city councilors. He will not be joining us oh, today. today. Uh, Jim Kleberg and his family are dealing with a complicated medical issue and appreciate your thoughts and prayers. At this point, Jim will not be participating in city politics for a few weeks. We will update you when we have more information. So just for your benefit. We'll move on to our active agenda resolution 2023-23 considering Amending resolution 2023-19 to authorize the city of Lewiston to expend up to $3 million for the design and construction of a solution for water storage in the high zone of the city of Lewiston's water system without compliance with formal bidding procedures. This is an action item, and we have our public works director here today, Dustin Johnson, who will introduce us to the subject, and then we will open it up for discussion. Director Johnson. Good afternoon, Mayor, City Council, Dustin Johnson, Public Works Director. So, uh, as the Mayor's already outlined, the, the two items on today's agenda are essentially uh, <coughs> attached. They're all part of the my reservoir uh, situation that we're trying to fix. And so, I am going to do my best to kind of outline the time and, and kind of generally where we've been and where we're going. Um, there we go. Okay. Uh, I, I, some of this stuff for the council and maybe members who have seen this before, this may be a little bit of repetitiveness, but I think for anybody who may be watching this for the first time, I'll try and do my best to give you a high level uh, outline of what's happening. So <clears throat> generally, January 18th, uh, the loss of the high reservoir. Uh, that was a situation uh, that uh, we're, I think most of the community is aware of. January 19th, uh, so that was essentially the next day, uh, that was uh, resolution 2023-6, that resolution was uh, issued, it was a similar, it was an emergency declaration, declaration and that allowed uh, city staff and the purpose of that was to get the necessary parts and materials uh, ordered and installed in order to remove that reservoir from the uh, rest of the system. So that was in the order, I don't have the number in front of me, but I believe it was a couple hundred thousand dollars. That was only to mitigate the emergency, that was not to fix the, the, the problem that we're in other than to get us off that boil order uh, so fast forward to January 26th when the boil when those parts and materials were installed the system was balanced out the reservoir was removed from the system and the boil order was lifted uh, more or less uh, half of the, the operation staff went to work trying to balance out the system the rest of the staff including the engineers and myself started working with uh, our contract engineers and our own uh, uh, technical staff to find a solution to how we're going to address the loss of high reservoir. So uh, by February 23rd, a technical update, uh, it was generally, some of these documents, I may rec they were technical, but they weren't necessarily a memo because the turnaround time had to be so quickly. That technical uh, document outlined possible scenarios uh, of mitigating that reservoir. Those included using the old reservoir, uh, temporary holding tanks, permanent holding tanks, steel tanks, concrete tanks, basically everything out there. Uh, this document was reviewed as far as uh, you know, many of these scenarios such as the steel tanks, the lead time for those steel tanks were beyond this summer and into this fall and winter and so the, the likelihood that it was even uh, something that we could consider, it, it fell off the list really quickly. So two, based off of this February 23rd uh, technical update, we went down two possibilities. One was called a Maju tank, which is basically a temporary holding tank, uh, only temporary uh, in nature. The other one was to investigate reusing uh, the high reservoir uh, and, and addressing the, what, you know, what was damaged in, in the breach and, and bringing it back online. Moving forward to March 27th, at that point, this uh, council approved resolution 23-19. 
that was a uh, document, uh, scope of services. There's two parts to that, and that was the recommendation uh, to reuse the high reservoir. There were some preliminary designs for considerations for overflow piping uh, and tying it into the system, but there was a small component, I say small, $400,000 in order for uh, some uh, minor demolition uh, and investigation and further design to look at how that um, that high reservoir could be could be uh, uh, reintroduced to the system. So that was that was also a, a uh, emergency declaration. The two components of that uh, that was in the packet. One was to allow the mayor to not exceed uh, four hundred thousand dollars for his signature, and that was to cover the um, the investigation, early demo work, uh, and then the rest was to not exceed two million dollars and that was to cover the, the improvements themselves. Uh, so uh, soon thereafter, early April, uh, cranes were brought in, demolition teams were brought in, engineers were brought in, and started looking into that. Uh, with that work on April 17th, I was in my office at 4.55 when I received a call from my, the engineer in Boise, took the call in my pickup in the parking lot, and they notified me that the, the investigation upon the work that they did in the demo, they, they were not able to uh, fulfill what they thought they were going to be able to do, which was to reuse the reservoir. Um, whether it was the condition, essentially it was an old reservoir, it was 100 years old. Anything new needed to be met current standard, and so trying to tie into that system in its condition was not, was not, feasible, not going to be feasible in the, in the schedule that we had. So at that point, April 17th, we had to move forward with a, a, a new, new, new plan. Not necessarily a new plan, a modified plan. May 3rd, which is today, is that modified plan. Um, so this is the third emergency declaration that is before you. What this third one does is now that we have a, a more vetted design, a scope of services, a schedule, uh, we can take it to you. Uh, there's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be honest, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is this uh, solution that we have, which I think we've already identified out in the public, is to take the roof off, uh, line the existing reservoir, patch the hole that's in the side, line it, and put in a floating, floating cover on that. The estimate on that is $2.4 million plus what they've already spent. So our request is to uh, approve a resolution that would allow us to procure those services without the typical procurement processes of bidding and RFPs and those nature to get this moving. Uh, the, the engineer and the contractor is ready to hit the ground essentially tomorrow uh, to get this, this project moving. So that is what this does. This expedites the procurement process, allows us the direct negotiations that we have been having, put those into a contract. Uh, and establishes a limit. The limit for this new one is $3 million. I said the good news and the bad news. The bad news is it's $3 million. Previously, the reusing the reservoir without taking the, the roof off was, was $2 million. So it's an extra million dollars. The good news is it, it, it is a more permanent solution. It gives us time to look holistically, not just what high reservoir functions as, but looking at where growth is going, uh, you know, the demand of the system, we have a new uh, water treatment plant which operates completely different from the old treatment plant. So it allows us, gives us time, and again, finding funds, we'll talk about that later, uh, finding funds to fix this in a holistic solution. The warranty for the floating lid is 20 years. So, you know, that gives you an idea that this is not a Band-Aid, uh, but it, it buys us time to find how we, down the road, need to uh, address any deficiencies that may May or not be in the in the um, in the system. Can I? Yes. Interject. Um, when we talk about the repair to the blowout, I had a little difficulty finding that in the proposal, um, and it's probably because I don't know terminology. So I just want to make sure I understand that it's in there and it, it, how it's described. It it is, and that's what's. A little unique in that the roof and everything, the liner, that was all that's all new. That's where that million dollars is coming from. That 
uh, repair and overflow, that was all part of our original design. So that hasn't changed. Okay, so then I was wondering, so the bullet points, reservoir, reservoir slab repair. Yep, that's that. Is that, is that okay? Yep. Okay, thank you. That's, when you said, said that, I was like, okay, that's what the one I can, mm -hmm. I hear slab and I think concrete slab, yeah, not. It's just tilted. Yeah, okay, thank you. Uh, so what happens, if, if this is kind of a replay of what happened, what we ran through in the last emergency declaration. What happens if we go, no, uh, we would have to go back, we would go through the standard procurement processes. Uh, there's absolutely no way this line, this would be in uh, the reservoir and water system would be online anytime for this irrigation season. Uh, and we would just have to work with the public and, and our, water, our water team to continue with the irrigation restrictions and just get by with how we can. So, uh, that, that is essentially all I have for, for the, um, the emergency declaration. Um, just so the question and the answer is out there in the public, so I have two questions, like if we went through the normal process of getting, and what would that time frame look like? Years. Uh, I, I don't want to oversell it, and the, the example I used was Community Drive Reservoir that's up by the high school, and so you know that was that was identified in a master plan. So not not we already have we have identified need, but it would probably be it would be a push to get it online for next summer's irrigation season. So okay. we would be looking probably fall of next year for it to be completed. Okay, and then just for transparency, why did we pick the, this first? Uh, the, the two, so this is the design build team that was working on a water treatment plant, uh, IMCO Construction and Stantec Engineering, uh, and they were, you know, if you look at the pictures that seem to be cycling out, they, those are the people looking into the hole uh, the day of, they were on site, and so they are uh, two, two firms that have a lot of resources and obviously have a lot of knowledge of our water system, <laughs> and so they were, we, we initially, I have the contracting ability for a certain amount, and so we immediately needed their assistance just because of the emergency, and that's when that, and then that second declaration came in, and so they're, those are the ones we selected because they have so much knowledge <coughs> with our water system and, and how that functions. I will wait to the party, so can we just get to speak, speak freely? Oh, not, maybe, maybe not freely, I'll try to restrain myself. Uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, my, my concern with that first vote was that it was a gamble. And I think what I like about this particular one is 20 years. 20 years is, to me, still not long term. Uh, in the, but it gives us, and I think that they use the right word, holistic, right? I mean, we, we can now look at what does that mean. And I appreciate, because I and I did recognize the, the company to, to know it's somebody that knows our water system, which I do feel like, and I appreciated your presentation on Monday to say, this is like, we're an uphill, right? Like, and so trying to get people to understand that it's not that we can't get you water, it's that we can't get you water because of redundancy and pressure. And, um, and I really appreciated the public, you know, coming with, you know, possible solutions. And so I've had conversations like, why can't we go every other day? Well, that then allows our highest water users, right, to then every other day, and it's not an exact science of, they do that and we blow everything. Um, so am I right, and as I read through this, this gives us that ability with the July 31st, that's their proposal, and I think you said on Monday also that it, that was not a conservative, that was like a, it, it, it's always a guessing game, but that's yep. that, that they they didn't want to be. Oh yeah, we can get it done by this time. Yep. It was yep. with everything that we've got going on supply and demand. So, um, I just want to reiterate again: we were asked to do four hundred thousand in the initial. We did that. That gave us a study. That gave us the answers to our questions of whether or not we could do a quick fix. And then we did two million dollars because we had a proposal for a fix, but through that investigation found that $2 million, if we spent it in the way that we thought we could, was not only a gamble, but more than likely a complete failure in our water system. We were not going to be able to meet current visit without doing more work, more between the roof structure, 
we weren't going to be able to tie in anything and meet current standards. And I'm not going to speak to it because I would I didn't draft the report. That was that was a, a structural engineer that, that came there. But it, it was very obvious at that point that we were going to have to spend a lot more money and a lot more time that we didn't have to get it to where we needed to be. And so this solution says, well, let's just scrap that and bring in our own roof. And, but instead of a gamble of $2 million, not a gamble of upwards of three total, three million total, we get a 20 year to where we can slow our roll, get everybody back online, hopefully prevent some things, come up with some creative solutions to make sure our public are taken care of. We don't have it. It's not a guess. This is this yes. is going to work. Yep. And I do like that it's the company that I, I think that's very imperative <coughs> for a, a certain people in the room that write for local news to know that this company understands our our entire system. I mean, it, it go. I mean, I will go out on a limb and say if this happened without this team on site when it happened, we would be in a completely different, I mean, we would be in a Yes. Okay. Thank you. The only thing I would want to add to that is I, I look at it in a historical context when, when and these both low and high reservoirs were built in the 20s, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably there were zero customers that lived uphill from those reservoirs. Right. And so. Correct. Now here we are, 100 years later, and you know, don't you know, look at the silver lining. This gives us the opportunity to say, let's let's balance our system, let's strategically get out in front of this, uh, so we can use gravity instead of trying to pump everything up the hill. Oh, I saw something in here about um, kind of I'll, liability. I'll get into that contract. Um, specifically to the contract okay. in, the, in the next meeting. Okay. Counselors, you have resolution 2023-23 before you. I, I would like to make a motion, but I have one more question. And that this is just, I want to make sure that I'm reading this correctly. Because it's 100 years old, and I do see some exceptions here. Exclusions, and the, the the word that everybody seems to go lead or and or asbestos abatement and disposal. Do we have any worry that that could be something we have to deal with? I did get com I I did get assurance that they have already done looking at that, and they they did not find that there is I believe there is a small contingency built into the contract for that but that would be a change order that is there's a small amount but from my understanding from what I've heard that there is no right. and that was expectation for it. that that word always <coughs> sticks out and we want to make sure you know that's something to consider I, I appreciate the effort and everything that you've dealt with with the stress and everything of, of this happening I, I <coughs> I'm grateful that we have a 20 year period to where we can be moving down the road with possible solutions. And, but I think, I think it's, it's extremely important that everybody is, is fully aware of where the money's coming from, how we're gonna deal with it. Because everybody's on board. I mean, the things that I've been hearing, once they understand, and I think your presentation Monday, I wanted this to be on the record, was was very illuminating for a lot of people. And, and I think it's, it needs to be spread so everybody can see it and be aware of that. And I hope that this, I hope that today's meeting is also put up for people to see. And I just want to tell you how much I appreciate it. And I would make a motion to approve resolution 2023-23. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second it then. And Okay, it's been moved by Councillor Towson, second by Councillor Lidke to approve resolution 
23. Is there further discussion? If I could just, again, I, I think this has been something that, um, for me, I, it's always nerve wracking to ask for emergency funds and to not have, I mean, at that point in time, it was like we wanted to prevent water restrictions. And I get, I think that's where, um, if I could implore anybody to watch a meeting, to truly see the full discussion and not rely on uh, an online article or even a newspaper, and, I, I, and I, that is not a judgment against, you, you cannot put a full transcript of a, movie, uh, a meeting, but to understand where we were coming from, and I think we were all a little nervous, like, okay, well, that's a lot of money, but if this gets people to protect their way of life, their, 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 our summer, I mean, we all, enjoy the NAIA. We all enjoy all those things. Um, for me to know that this gives us time to make really good long-term decisions, which again puts us in a position we need to make those really good long-term. Um, I think that I'm committed to having those conversations and I do think and I will echo um, Councillor Towsley and that I think that presentation on Monday um, really did help. I think that if if all of us counselors are engaging in those emails and being honest with the people that are truly concerned about that, it is an investment to have your. But I also feel like this is a chance for us to think outside the box, to come up with creative solutions to get through this, and it may lead to the city of Lewiston making some really great leaps in how we want to move forward and so I want you to know from me to you you did not ask for this I didn't sign up for this but I, I did right when you run for mm -hmm. public service that's what you do um, and so I'm committed as I think you are in making sure that we move this forward so I am 100% um, for this wish it was cheaper Guess what? I wish gas was cheaper too. So we've, we've just got to do what we got to do to make sure that we're not waiting a year. So, Mayor. Councilor Forsman. Uh, I just echo a lot of that. I know I've gotten calls and emails from citizens today uh, with fears and, and when are we going to get this going? And a lot of it is just let's get it, let's get it going. And it's not so much the concern about cost. I haven't really heard that. Um, obviously, million dollars is not an easy pill to swallow but we need to get it up and going um, and they're just asking what can we do and, and what's holding it up so I think that the public would be good to know that we're not just going to hold this off and wait longer um, as well as a, a learning opportunity I feel like for all of us and um, hopefully we can maybe put some uh, budget aside for future plans and, and, and long-term solutions for right now 20 years is a, is a good timeline for us to be able to do that in the future councils and to be able to work with that so I appreciate all your efforts and your team efforts um, you know it's a lot of hard work and um, I'm glad to know that we're keeping some bounds and we're seeing some timelines to give to the public director I'm just going to ask one quick question before I ask Tony to call the roll and that is the number 20 that we've been talking about here. Is this a 20-year solution or is it a 20-year warranty it's of a, work product? It's a 20-year warranty. So, yeah. So we could do something different uh, well before 20 years or so, but it, the warranty on the product is 20 years. So yeah. it, it may or may not be a long-term solution. Yeah, the concern with the Maju tank that we referenced was it was a smaller volume and its expectancy, it was exposed to the sun. The, the con the, the contractor couldn't bear couldn't guarantee it would last more than three four five years so that's why we did not want to spend a million dollars on something that really didn't quite fit our need and wouldn't last more than a couple seasons it bought us time it got us off the irrigation restrictions but it's felt like throwing bad money after it where this where the where the manufacturer would warranty it for 20 years gave us more assurance that this is this is more more stable and one follow up when we talk about that, that if we were going to avoid possibly irrigation restrictions, right? Because timelines were never guaranteed on that original vote. No, no, no. That, that was, we were voting on a concept. Yep. Thank you. I think that should be noted as well. Okay, counselors, if there's no further questions, I'll ask uh, Deputy Clark Brock to call the roll. 
Council President Litke? Aye. Councillor Towsley? Aye. Councillor Spickelmeyer? Aye. Councillor Schroeder? Aye. Councillor Forsman? Aye. Motion passes. Thank you, Councillors. Next up, item B, high reservoir repair. WR701 design build agreement with IMCO General Construction Incorporated change order number one. Considering approval of change order number one for high reservoir repair, WR701 agreement between IMCO General Construction Incorporated and the City of Lewiston for phase two high reservoir repair improvements in the amount of $2,442,000 and authorizing the mayor to sign the agreement. This is an action item. And again, uh, Director Johnson, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, so this is the contract behind the uh, emergency declaration that we, I think I remember the you know, second to emergency declaration was told we were bringing it back to the council. This one's a little bit different than what we said, but here we are bringing it before you for your review. We've already talked a lot about the details. I discussed it briefly Monday night, but essentially, as I've already said, taking the roof off the top, lining the, repairing the, the hole that's in the side, lining it, tying in all the pipes and the valves and all the necessary hardware um, and overflows and and filling it with and then putting a putting a floating lid on top uh, that's before you the, the info proposal with the with the budget and the schedule is in there you can kind of track uh, generally you know on, I guess page 15 of 39 anticipated notice to proceed is today so we are fulfilling our end of the bargain on it uh, mobilization starts tomorrow, begins on-site work on the 8th of May, uh, and then kind of generally breaking down, there's the liner and the geotech, uh, geotech fabric, uh, and then the, the order of the floating cover. Um, I, I've said it, I think previously I'll say it again, the, the critical path item on this project is the floating cover. If we can get the floating cover sooner uh, and make sure that we have all our yard work done, we can get online sooner. If there's delays on the cover, that means we're later. Uh, and we are at the, at the mercy of the supply chain. I will say, you know, IMCO was our contractor for the water treatment plant. They have, being a contractor, they have grown significantly in the last 20 years in the Northwest. Uh, they have connections that I sure as heck don't. And so relying on their connections, I mean, they are the ones who came up with this concept. And so leaning on them, um, God bless them, they're, they're doing everything they can for us, and so we, we appreciate their work, but there's only so much work, only so much you can do to get to get some of these supply chains worked out. So really quickly, just because I want people to understand why that floating cover is important and why we ended up in a boil <coughs> order, and so correct me if I'm wrong, the DEQ is really who determines, and so the exposure to the outside air, which if you're like me, I want, if I can't breathe it, why can't I drink the water, right? But that's their stipulation that when when at first there was still water, right? We had a little bit of water in there, but we had to go to boil water because it was exposed to the air. The floating cover allows us to secure that so that we don't have a boil order, correct? Correct. And I think that's a very substantial note for people because on top of restrictions to irrigation nobody wants to go back to a boil order either okay. yeah that, that is that's exactly it that um, you know ironically that that the reservoir was built in the 20s and I think the roof was built in 56 so it operated for 35 years or whatever it was 30 years uh, as an open-air reservoir you know things have changed uh, and that's not going to argue with it people don't die of dysentery anymore so we're grateful for that but also that that is that is not a really negoti negotiable standard with with the DEQ that it, it needs to be protected from the environment whether it's birds mice chemicals whatever it is that that is what we're after is protecting protecting it from whatever could be entered into the system um, on page 18 of this on the fee proposal design and STC services it talks about the yard piping upgrades it's the third bullet down yeah. and um, it says that it's going to be <coughs> potable water feed drain and associated alarms and sensors to restore functionality and reduce future overflow risks when I read that is this basically the same stuff 
that was in the old reservoir that failed? Um, or is it different? It is more, more modern. Um, there, there was modifications to the old reservoir. This is now just looking at it with the belt and suspenders kind of approach to it. You have multiple lines of communication and engaging. You have water level gauges, how you have pump gauges, you have all those stuff. It's the same system that it's tying into. It's just newer and given that this what has happened at that reservoir, we want to make damn sure it doesn't happen again. So there the design is is incorporating in that that we won't let it happen again. Thank you. So to follow up on the DEQ comment, so do they have to approve our plan or, or and so will they inspect the final product there? The DEQ, so uh, the other component on this, which I haven't said because I haven't had time, but oh, is that, well, not, not today, but no. just generally, is we have brought the DEQ in. And again, kind of think the questions you asked about how long would this take to, to, to build? Typically, you, you kind of do your own work on the side with the engineers and the, you know, and, and then you bring, then you take it to the DEQ. Knowing that we have such a, a reduced timeline, the DEQ has been very generous with their time to say they have been participating in some of our meetings to just understand kind of the concepts that we're taking taking forward in this and making sure that they're they're with us step by step. So we don't throw something on them at the last day and say we're ready to go and they say you didn't check this box. So yeah, the DEQ is is the ones that that will green. They were the ones who greenlit us removing the the boil order and they're the ones who will say you know you're good to go to tie it to the water system. And if, if I could just comment on that, because um, that was going to be my next question to clarify, because I know that um, both you and the mayor have, from the get-go, involved the DEQ, so that that wouldn't, with, within our power, be a hindrance in this plan. And I do appreciate that, that we involved them immediately, because, again, they're the ones that... And they haven't been in encumbrance. No, no. Know, so. I mean, they're literally in the building next door to us, yeah. and... and We've had, like I said, we've had it's good for people to know that. And and I mean, those are the local local folks that we deal with on a daily basis. Not just this, but on other sure. you know, water wastewater issues, which is why they're here. Uh, and then there's there's others in, in Boise, and they may have you know the availability availability to pull some purse strings that we're also in conversations with. Sure, sure. Can we go over just a little bit of uh, page sixteen for the clarification and assumptions? A little bit explaining the it's completely independent of the Lewis and the WTPD. Yep, that's the water treatment plant design, progressive design build project. Yeah, and it talked about, um, sorry, the, it takes no responsibility for the remainder of the age of the reservoir. So just basically because of, can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so, so that was part of the original beginning when we brought in that design team of, well, the IMCO, design build team of IMCO Scantech. <clears throat> they they were not and they should not be held responsible liability of if there's any other deficiencies within the system that weren't identified they're not taking you know liability their focus is to fix what has been identified in, in the engineering design not something that hasn't been identified so that's just that saying to saying there may be something else that's broken in there that hasn't been identified at this point that's not our responsibility we, there's no reason to assume that but so in the case of this, then they're basically just anything that they do is repairs that they do, they would obviously be responsible yeah. for, but nothing yeah. from the existing infrastructure yeah. that feels that would not be on them. Yeah, okay. if, if you take your car to the shop because you have a bad transmission, right. they're not guaranteeing that your head gasket won't fail the minute you pull out of the parking lot. So it's too good. this is what we're focusing on, this is what we're fixing. We're, we're not saying there's anything else out there. Yeah. Uh, going to a different shop. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, uh, yeah. I just wanted to make sure I read that correctly, so that way, um, yeah. you know, I make sure I'm doing my due diligence. They're and, they're building this software, all of that that's on there. It's, mm -hmm. it's on. Yeah. yeah, and I think that yeah, that makes it. But the old is on us, <laughs> essentially. Okay. Thank you. Uh, for a motion. Well, I was just going to. Well, we've already talked about the price, the completion date, uh, the, the where it's coming from. There, there's been a couple questions about where the, where the money is coming from. Essentially, when we had, if you remember back to the FCS rate study, the rate study recommended we start. There was debt service, so when we did that state revolving fund loan, 
we, pay, we now have debt payments to the state revolving fund at a low interest rate, so we have to have a, a debt service portion of our budget uh, and the reserve to pay for that. We have what we created, what was called an opportunity fund, and the opportunity fund was we're gonna put a brand new sewer main down this road, the water main is 80 years old, we don't have money for it, we can, we can use the opportunity fund to tie that into it. And then we have the capital fund reserve that was there for exactly this. That's all pulled together in one fund. There's general valuations at one fund, but that, those are reserves. They have different purposes, but in a time like this, we can draw from those. So generally, we're just short of $4 million in reserves, and so we're at just short of $3 million, so that leaves us roughly a $1 million in reserves. But that's pending, that's just within our own enterprise fund. We have. We have many conversations with the insurance, with the DEQ, state and federal agencies, uh, and then we did receive the DEQ emergency funds. I can't remember what the dollar amount was. It was a couple hundred, a couple hundred thousand dollars. And again, these are the specifically this pool of money. Like we again cannot pull from other can't pull from other enterprise funds. These are right. water enterprise funds. Thank you. Because that was a, a big question: is why can we stop this project to do yeah. this project? Yeah, we, we have no correlation to a courthouse construction, we have no correlation to a wastewater plant, uh, or a sanitation, um, or even a stormwater utility that doesn't have any money in it. But this is only a, a water water enterprise fund. Correct. Thank you. Perfect. Kind of off the subject, but back a little bit. That, so once this is done, will it be back to the same capacity it was before the breach? I don't have the design. I mean, it, it, I can guarantee it won't be four and a half million because you're taking the roof off and you're lowering and you're putting a liner and, and mm -hmm. so it, it, I know it, it will have adequate capacity. What that capacity is probably, we needed a million, a million and a half and it will be far in excess of that. And we have a brand new catalog that could refill it <laughs> Very quickly. quickly. Just Very not quickly. too quickly that we have another failure. Right. Probably too soon, but I think that needs to be said. Uh, it sounds here too in the contract though they'll be keeping um, uh, like constant communication basically. So as far as uh, weekly meetings, it says keeping you on the yeah the yeah I and I think we, we dis home. discussed it on Monday. Um, we're putting uh, I haven't worked on this one yet because we're going to sign the contract, but uh, we're already for our own for the irrigation restrictions. I, I think I said I'm committed yeah. to try and get weekly or as necessary updates. As to the condition of the, um, of the of water system as it reacts to the summer, uh, and then I'm also committed to you know giving an update. I think that's going to be very valuable for not only my blood pressure but the public to know. Okay, there's people working there. Okay, here's the liner that that, that we can start taking down this and showing you know we're, we're behind behind schedule or ahead schedule or on schedule, and here's some savings that we've experienced. You know, kind of giving them. The play by play. I, typically, people get bored when I talk about contracts and engineering, but I think this one, the, the spotlight is there, and so I, I will, I will give the information. You've got the spotlight. Now. I find it riveting. And I hope, I hope no one else has the spotlight for a while. Yeah. They can have it when this is done. No, I know, but I hope no one. I hope yeah. we don't need another spotlight yeah. somewhere. Well, a, a spotlight could be positive. Okay. Maybe a win would be great. Okay. But I want to say too that I obviously have received several emails from concerned citizens today, and I appreciate that very much. And they have shared some ideas, um, and some of those we've already um, pursued. Some of them we have not. So um, I shared some of those with Congressman Fulter's office today, and he's actually going to make another call and check into some of these things. So we're not uh, going to stop looking just because we have a, a solution here that will carry us through a little bit. We're still going to be looking for more longer term um, arrangements, including uh, if there's any types of, of um, funds, you know, that we might be able to tap into to help you fund some of But all we can do is ask and keep looking. But um, I just want to thank Congressman Folger's office for uh, being engaged and paying attention. Okay. Councilor Lake, I, I want to echo that. I think that's fantastic, and, and um, just um, I, I think our state legislators—they've um, said, you know, let them know. And I, 
I like to harp on them as much as possible. Uh, they're part time, but let's make them full time at home. Um, so I think that uh, I, I want to appreciate the fact that we have um, a mayor that Im immediately engaged uh, at state and federal level. That that hopefully, because um, I think what we all know is that we have the money that we have available to us right here in front of us. But I think historically the city has not been, uh, for lack of a better term, privy to the, the, the knowledge of that there are state and federal dollars. And I think that this has been something that we haven't gotten that yet, but we're at least initiating that conversation that as we build on this and, and try to improve that, we are seeking ways to bring relief to our residents. And I, I commend city's leadership in doing so and and uh, I have no problem reaching out to those folks as well and I, I'm, I'm sure the other counselors are that you know this is unprecedented um, and we can talk to we're to blue in the face of what we could have done and what should have been done in years past but I I'm very confident that we're moving forward correctly um, and that we will hold to a solution so I just again Dustin I was going to let Chelsea take it from me. I'd make a motion to approve change order number one for a high reservoir repair. Second. WR 701 agreement between IMCO General Construction Incorporated and the City of Lewiston. Second. <laughs> it's been moved by Councillor Tyler, seconded by Councillor Forsman to approve change order number one for a high reservoir repair, WR 701 agreement between Input General Construction Incorporated and the City of Lewiston. Is there discussion? Or Raven Brock? Or mm -hmm. Brocky? Councilor President Lickey? <coughs> Aye. Councilor Towsley? Aye. Councilor Spickelmeyer? Aye. Councilor Schroeder? Aye. Councilor Forsman? Aye. Motion passes. Motion passes. Thank you, Councilors. Next up is uh, 10 item 3 adjournment. I would move to adjourn. I'll second. Moved by <laughs> Councillor Lick, please second by Councillor Schroeder to adjourn. Those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned.